our exploration this month of October of the chapel service has been understanding the unlimited power of faith. And we have been seeing, we have exercised our faith, we have seen diverse testimonies by the good hand of the Lord. Some of the testimonies shared also this morning, the young lady also made our expression of our faith. The word of God, the potency of his help. Well, thanks be to God who has caused us to triumph in every place. I believe that this semester, we all know, is coming to an end with exams starting in a few days, I think um, six or seven days' time. Everyone here, student, will excel. I said, every one student here, we excel. Amen. But you will require the help and the grace of God to see the manifestation of his help in your life. We have considered a few things on the subject of the unlimited power of faith. Looking at what is unique about faith, the miracle power of faith, the breakthrough power of faith. But there's something so important this morning that we need to receive. And it's the impartation of the spirit of faith. The impartation of the spirit of faith. Yes, many of us are aware, many of us have imbibed, many of us are walking in the consciousness of the word of faith. But I want to submit to every one of us here that it will take more than words to triumph and to see the Help of God being unleashed upon our path. That's why we require an impartation this morning. Somebody said, What are you talking about, chaplain? Until the spirit of faith becomes imparted in your life, then there are some. Questions you may not be able to answer. Challenges that you may not be able to quench. Things you may not be able to say. And what a joy by divine orchestration exam is coming and we are talking about this because there are questions you will not be able to answer. <laughs> you just need the spirit, my brother. You know, you know, let me tell you something here. There are quite a number of us just, like I often say, you are just good. You are just excellent. And uh, You see, God knows how to humble every man. He knows where to put the draft on, pull the plug on you. He knows it. He's your maker, he's your creator. We didn't make ourselves, he made, we were made of him. He knows just when to pull the plug. Somebody says, oh, I'm just going to study. I'm study." You know, like I said on Sunday, I said, well, if your study time, the substitute for study time is when you should be in the house of the Lord. Good luck. To you. Sunday service is two hours. Chapel service is two hours. Okay, I want to come to chapel service. I have, some, I have so many things to read. Read. Oh. Read. And let's see the plug pulled out from you. After all the reading, get to the exam, only goes blank. There's a little movie that I'm sure sometime we'll get across to it. I said it on Sunday, Grace Unplugged. <laughs> May your grace not be plugged out. Simple. So all the, all the, hello, you don't have any problem. Just do anything you like with God. Then when he's ready to unplug you, he'll just unplug you. 
A young lady was thanking God for her life right now here, her birthday, because she has walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Some people don't know the essence of birthday. <laughs> Ask the people who almost died. Then you understand what we are talking about. Ask the people who have been afflicted with sicknesses. Then you'll be able to appreciate what we are talking about. So when somebody said, me thank God for a one year added. Some people didn't see the end of 365 days. Grace will not be unplugged in your life. Amen. Did I hear? Believe in amen there. Yes. Three to five hundred level students, I said grace will not be unplugged in your life. So we need the impartation of the spirit of faith. I remember God's servant, our chancellor said, God told him, oh, quite prepared. Now, can you imagine? After 26 months of fasting and prayer, I'm sure he should be too sure. After going through about 36 different biographies of ministries, like, like he said, he should be too sure. But, at the end of the matter, God said a word. He said, okay, son, with all your prayers and fastings and preparation, I won't want you to go like others have gone. Now, call to my servant a day boy that he may impart. You know, there's a missing link. You know, where many people think uh, uh, spiritual things have. Now, let me see. There is no one of us that, none of us, biologically, that didn't come from a mother and father. It was only Jesus that the Holy Ghost was the father. And let me tell you this. You will never be anything in the spirit realm when you don't understand who you must be imparted with. It's transferred. He said, now, I won't want to go like others have gone. Now, call to my servant Adeboye that he may impart. Come on, say impart. Say it like you believe it, impart. Impart unto you the spirit of wisdom. Impart. That's the only way you can go, impart. That's what you need, impart. There's an impartation that you require. Many people who don't now, there are PhD postgraduate students that are here. You cannot finish your thesis without a reference. You are gliding on someone's shoulder. Like Axel Newton said, you can't claim to have seen further except climbing on the shoulders of them that have gone before you. We have a proud generation that will never make reference to where they have received where they, what they have. And you can't go far. Because there is nothing that we receive or we have that we have not received. You got what you got from somewhere. Acknowledge it, celebrate it, connect to it. Now, if it may interest you, I have a little book. I, my admin officer just went through it shortly. Many never recognize the unction that had been imparted. Pastor Adeboye also was imparted. Just a few years, about a year or thereabout, he said he traveled to Tulsa, Oklahoma with Pastor Ia Adeboye, who was the interpreter. And, and a very small boy, among the very big, big and people. Remember, Redeemed Christian Church of God had been existing over 30 something years before God's servant, Pastor Adeboye, came in to take the mantle. Via impartation. And remember the story said. In Tulsa prophecy came. Baba didn't understand any English. And uh, he said. Oh mommy kill on we. He said. Daddy don't worry. When they finish the prophecy I will say it. So he wrote all the prophecy. And went to the hotel in Tulsa. And uh, he started unleashing all the, all the things. And one of the things he said. God said to his servant. Parking die on me that you have fulfilled all that you require in covenant for me. Now I will make this ministry 
a worldwide ministry where every tribe and tongue will be shouting hallelujah. So every time you see God's servant, uh, I'll call him our grandfather in the faith, come up and say, let someone shout hallelujah. It's a fulfillment of prophecy because 150 nations of the earth, they are shouting hallelujah. But listen to me. That man, that same night, told Pastor Adeboye, kneel down in Tulsa and laid hands on him. And when that hand came on him, there was a transference of spirit that even caused an head tremor. That hotel in which they were was shut down for 30 years. It was reopened 2011. Let me tell somebody in partition. Tell me somebody in partition. So God saw what transferred between Parking Diomi and Pastor Adeboye. And also needed a son who was going to walk in the same light and said, by the hand of God, by the Spirit, go and meet this man for an impartation. Hey, be awake here. Thank God for the word of faith. But we require the impartation of the spirit of faith to move ourselves to where God desires for us. And we saw that encounter. Every one of us may have heard the story from God's servant, but I'm trying just to reawaken our consciousness to that. And prayed for him at the commissioning of this great ministry. And today is evident, it's like Father. And like son, I pray that every one of us here, you know I'm a son too, as much as you are, we will be evident representative of the spirit of faith that is coming forth from this ground. Yeah. If your amen is louder, it will be. Yeah. I mean evident of the spirit of faith that is resident on the chancellor, our father. Hey, many of us have seen some miracles. Many of us have seen breakthroughs. But we need the spirit of faith. Now somebody says, oh, what are you talking about? Why do I need this faith? This spirit of faith. Hey, to think the unthinkable, you require the spirit of faith. To think the unthinkable, this one, we call it in a, what do you call it? Maybe in the academia, thinking out of the box. Because there's a box. There are many things that will box your life, box your research, box everything. And they, on, until you have the spirit of faith, then you can take it out of the box. No, this has not existed before, but it has, that's why, and that's why we talk about possibility thinking. This can happen. This will happen. And how would this happen? Oh, the eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man. What God has prepared for those that love him and they are imparted by the spirit of faith. When the spirit of faith comes upon you, now you expect the unexpected. We saw that in the life of Noah, Hebrews, and in chapter 11 and in verse 7. <laughs> Quite clear, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of the things not seen yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he commended the world, condemned the world, and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Warned of God. Warned of God. And many people have received warning. Now, students who are here. Many of you have received warnings. And this is another warning. You will require the spirit of faith. Noah was warned and said, hey, there's a coming. Change upon this earth. Get set. And he prepared himself. Many have received warning. The exam is coming up, but you won't listen to warning. So you are just too big. Okay, let's see how you survive. <laughs> I just pray you don't do anything called malpractice. That's a signal. You better fear God than fearing exam. 
Because when you fear the Lord, the Bible says it's the beginning of wisdom. The beginning of wisdom. When you are imparted with the spirit of faith, you speak the unspeakable. Second Kings and in chapter 7 and in verse 18 to 19. Hey, the economic advisor was saying, oh, no, 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 no. Things cannot happen here. He said, and it shall come to pass. The man of God spoke of the king saying, two measures of belly shall be sold for a shekel. And he said, well, excuse me, if the windows of heaven will open, what can do? He said, nothing can happen. He said, listen, you will see it with your eyes, but you, you will not touch it. I pray that the spirit of faith will come upon every one individual here in the mighty name of Jesus. Daniel said, can Abednego said, listen to all. We will not bow to this groving image. And they stood in faith. Now, you see, they stood to the point of the fact that, listen, we know we are not mindful to answer the king in this matter. We know our God is going to deliver, but even if he does not deliver us, we choose to spawn than to bow. We choose to burn than to bow. Now, you need, now, you see, well, some, I believe there is no student here that has been drinking alcohol. But in case you are, are well, let's hope he's not around here. Because the day you are tested for alcohol, your studentship has finished. But some of us who are faculty, I'm sure we were in that line before. But we have changed now. Yes, of course, there are some of us in faculty who have drank some few bottles before. Uh -huh, so, he's uh, not, it's not out well. Now, I drank alcohol, I think, once in my life. In my form five, I jumped fence. Went to the nearby, you know, I don't tell you what I did. I jumped fence, went to the other village, Sabotation and in Kaduna there, where my school was, and they trying to prove at the age of 87, that was 16, trying to prove at the age of 16 that I was a big boy too. So went to the village, went to drink. Um, I think they were all charging, you cannot finish one bottle of gold. I think I drank two that day. So when I drank two Golda that day, my life was just very wonderful. I went back to hostel and just, woo, boy. I was, that was how I was walking and all that. Well, thank God that um, God was able to recover me quickly. I know what alcohol has done in my genealogy. But God rescued me. Now, what am I trying to say? Every time you are under the influence of alcohol, you are not yourself. That's a spirit. And oftentimes, some parts of the world, they even call alcohol spirit. Am I correct? Spirit. <laughs> so it's a spirit that drives you towards doing all manner of nonsense, all manner of, because of the, that's, listen to me, the spirit of God came upon Peter. The same man who was fidgety to identify with Jesus. He said, wait, you'll be endured with power from on high. And when the spirit of faith came on that same man, he said, we cannot but speak of the things we have seen, we have heard, and our hands have handled of the word of life. First John chapter 1 verse 1. We cannot but speak of it. He said, listen, you can't keep us quiet because we were trading with the word of faith before, but now the spirit of faith has come upon our lives. I pray that in this season and in this month, may the spirit of faith be released upon someone's life. The spirit of faith makes you to dare the undearable, conquer the unconquerable. Quite important. Achieve the unachievable. You saw the life of Gideon. Gideon had 30,000, but when every one of them were checked out, they only had 300 of them and the battle was won. I pray, someone is looking at the strength now this semester. 300 to 500 level students, I speak to you by the word of the Lord. Like Gideon, I want you to enter this exam going in your mind. Now, what, what do that mean? As far as you recognize the help of God in all your way, you will do valiantly. Amen. Did I hear? Believe in amen there. Amen. The question is this. 
How do we connect to this impartation of the spirit of faith? Remember in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. <laughs> How do we have access of this impartation? Number one is this. We must identify a carrier of this spirit. Identify a carrier. Identify who carries the spirit of faith that I require to deliver my destiny. Who is the carrier? Who is the carrier? Papa, our, our father in the faith, the chancellor, located the carrier in the spirit. Who is the carrier? Identify him. Identify her. Number two, crave for what he carries. Crave for what he carries. He said in Psalm 163 and in verse 1 to 3, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. O my soul tested for thee, my flesh longed for thee, in a dry and tested land where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because of thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. My lips shall praise thee. Crave for what he carries. Like I gave the example, God's servant craved for that. Crave for what Higgins carried. I remember our father shared, I went to Tulsa. Again, the same Tulsa. That Tulsa has some unction. Yes. If you find out quite a number, or a robust stays around Tulsa, uh, who again... Um, there are quite a number of them. There are some cities in that America that are studded with giants of faith. Every one of them. He went to Tulsa and said, whatever makes Hagen, Hagen, I want it. And just like it is, he said he didn't sit down in the front and all that, but sat down just at the back and in the ministration. That's why God... He saw when there was a change in the life of that man or there was a change in ministration. He said oil filled his face and began to drip and something came from the altar to reach to him. If you are truly desirous today, the spirit of faith that is upon our father in faith be released to you right now. Yeah. Oh, I say it, let it be released to you right now. Yeah. There was a crave. He also mentioned while he was praying one day, he said, God told him, arise, get down to Benin and meet my servant. Wow, well, you see, while I look at this story because of so many things, I ask myself the question, how many of us today can really exposedly say these are the impacts we have had in our life that has taken us to where we desire? Many are getting set for their exams now and story they are not connecting to the spirit of God, the spirit of faith that will bring about the desired change they require so we must crave for what that carrier carries not only that we must open up to his word open up to his word What does he have to say? I want to say to faculty, staff, and student of Covenant University, how much have we heard from the servant of God who carries the spirit of faith? You know one of the things we have commonized being around him? There's one prayer I pray until my assignment is done here. May I never commonize my access to him. Never, 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 not to commonize it. 
Because we have the unction does not flow from down to up. It flows from up to down. Water does not flow. It flows down. So listen, the moment you are either at the same level or higher than you, it cannot flow. There is nothing. Even this is my privileged life here. Every of my colleagues that are here, there is nothing in my life that will flow to anyone here, spiritually. If this is just an academic gathering, to just hear one young man to say whatever he likes, that's all. It's whatever he likes you will hear. But when you want to hear the word of the Lord, you will hear it. Because you are connected to what God wants to say. Not what Kyle Day Martins wants to say. That's why I used, I don't put pastor. I didn't put chaplain. It's Kyle Day Martins. Because title does not determine entitlement. It's Kyle Day Martins. Any day, any time. That's my name. That's complete. So listen to me and listen well. You need the spirit of faith. And you must open up to every word of instruction that has been coming from this altar of grace by the help of God. So that something can burst forth in your life. Can I hear an amen there? In Acts chapter 10 and in verse 44, Cornelius opened his heart to receive the word from Peter. And in verse 44, while he was Speaking, the Holy Ghost came upon them and they burst forth speaking in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is coming upon someone this morning. Amen. Number four, you must engage in a so tight relationship with the carrier. A so tight relationship with the carrier. We saw Elijah and Elijah, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. He said, oh, oh, you need a double unction of my anointing. He said, hey, this is a hard thing to get. But if you see me. Now, let me, let me also say this here. It will help someone. Oral Roberts raised Kenneth Copeland. And how many of us have, have, have seen God's servant Kenneth Copeland here in this nation? He's been here. Quite a number of us have been around him. In the footsteps of the prophet... Kenneth taught, I mean, all our robots taught Kenneth Copeland the principle of focus this way. If you remember the story, how he got connected to Kenneth, he came, oh, what a joy, praise God. He came to the university of uh, Oral Roberts University. He was a student. So the Holy Ghost told him to go to Senate building. <laughs> and Senate building was on top, the Chancellor was there, and you know how every one of us, including myself, will always vibrate when it comes around Senate building or whatever. But he went there and he was trying to say, okay, well, the Holy Ghost told him, he was not aware, the Holy Ghost told him that go and register in the Senate building that in case there is an aircraft to fly, you are a commercial pilot, he's a commercial pilot, and we want to fly for the school. Because he was a student. He stepped into the office, met the secretary, and he was just signing the, this in, I'm Kenneth Copeland, I'm a commercial pilot, I wanted it. And suddenly, Ora Robo stepped in. You know, he's tall and all that. And just held him on the back. The moment he turned, he has given us, he said, he looked at him up and said, what, what, what are you doing here? He said, yes, I'm a commercial pilot and all that. I said, okay, so you are the one God has sent God, the ministry just bought an aircraft. They were looking for somebody to fly. Or a, um, Kenneth Copeland was coming in as a student and he was going to be the man who was being the pilot of that aircraft. Divine orchestration. When God began to raise him, or I will tell Kenneth Higgins, I mean Kenneth um, Copeland, that listen, anytime I throw my suit, it must never land on the ground. So an oral minister so very voiceously and on his suit, he will remove his suit and boom, any direction he swings it to Kenneth Copeland, whoo! <laughs> In the meeting, all the minutes of oral, Kenneth's eyes never leaves the prophet. His eyes follow. Remember my instruction, follow closely. Follow closely. He followed him 
until he received the unction that was on Oral Robert's life. He received that unction that was on Oral Robert's life. Your soul tie relationship with the carrier will determine what will rub off on you. May the Lord give us understanding. These things are not strange. We have heard them over and again. But many of us have not taken note of what we need to do. That struggle in that your project will come with ease when the spirit of faith comes upon you. Because that's the spirit of solution. Everywhere you have been blocked right now, I decree let the hand of God be rested upon you. <laughs> Finally, not only having a soul tie, there must be a fatherhood tie with the carrier. A fatherhood tie with the carrier. He said in Proverbs 13 and in verse 20, He that walketh with the wise is wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. A fatherhood tie. Well, I came in from Benin some few months ago, and it's obvious that even at death, the fatherhood tie with, between Archbishop Benson Idaosa and God's servant is still very strong. Very strong. Very strong. Kept alive. There is no meeting that God's servant requires to be in Benin. He will be there in a jiffy. Mommy Dausa cannot call him and he'll be there once. All of us were aware that Kenneth Copeland has a place of abode in the mandate. <laughs> Quite clear. You will never see God's servant finish his statement and you will hear something that has to do with Kenneth Higgins, Pastor Ia Deboe, the unctions and all, everything. Everything. So, it's over to you today. You are dwelling on this ground where the spirit of faith is breaking forth. Student, staff, faculty. What have entered into you? God said in Luke chapter 1 and in verse 17. And he shall go forth in the spirit of Elijah. And what would he do? He said, turning the hearts of the fathers to the children and to the disobe disobedient, to the wisdom of the just, to make a people prepared for the Lord. Have you been walking in obedience or you have been walking in disobedience? It's over to you. Let me share one thing with you students. If we take the record of chapel services this semester, to bear. Many of you will not write exams. God knows and you also knows. No. The way you have done, if you are told not to write the exam now, you will cry blood. But there's nothing you can do about it. Disobedience. Disobedience. But I pray you know, God knows how to judge disobedience. It's quite simple. He can judge it with man, but God can decide to deal with disobedience his ways. All the time I look at students and I look at their results, every time it gives me a clear interpretation of when they have obeyed and when they have disobeyed. Many started well. The moment they began to disobey, God began to unplug grace. Many are struggling and they know it. Why? Because they have refused to allow the spirit of obedience, which is the spirit of faith, to be released upon their lives. So, over to you. This morning, by the help of God, we have seen miracles, we have seen breakthroughs, but the best is yet to come. I didn't hear your amen there will be research breakthroughs by the spirit of faith. There will be academic breakthroughs by the spirit of faith. Did I hear believing in amen there? So everyone under the sound of my voice, the moment you put yourself right in God, 
then it's a new dawn for you. Rise up on your feet. Hallelujah.